Hey, good evening. We'll call to order the Monday, December 6, 2021 meeting of the Port of Adara Park and Recs Commission. Rebecca, could you please take roll? Commissioner Charlie? Here. Commissioner Elson? Here. Commissioner Kennig? Here. Commissioner Miles? Here. Commissioner Phipps? Here. Commissioner McPherson? Co-Chair Janowski? Here. And Co-Chair Brown? Here. Thank you. And before we get started, Rebecca, if you wouldn't mind taking us through the urgency action item two. Thank you, Louise. Um, as we did at the last meeting, um, this is different from the action that the Town Council and the Planning Commission take because uh, your body doesn't uh, adopt resolutions. So this action is asking the commission to approve meeting by remote teleconference and adopt the following findings. One, on March 4th, 2020, Governor Newsom proclaimed a state of emergency declared by Governor Newsom under the California Emergency Services Act due to COVID-19, which is still in existence. Two, on November 1st, 2021, the Marin County Public Health Officer issued public health order recommending the wearing of face coverings in workplace workplaces and indoor public settings due to the rise of the SARS-CoV-2 Delta variant, which is still in effect. State or local, three state or local officials continue to impose or recommend measures to promote social distancing and the state of emergency declared by Governor Newsom on March 4th, 2020, continues to directly impact the ability of Parks and Recreation Commission members, staff, and the public to safely meet indoors in person. And four, the Town Council of Puerto Madera has directed all legislative bodies within the town to meet by teleconference until further notice. Um, so staff is asking that the commission um, make a motion to approve meeting by remote teleconference and adopt these findings. Thank you. So we have a motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. And I'll take the roll call vote. Commissioner Charlie? Yes. Commissioner Elson? Yes. Commissioner Kennick? Yes. Commissioner Miles? Yes. Commissioner Phipps? Yes. Commissioner McPherson? Co-Chair Janowski? Yes. And Co-Chair Brown? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So we before we start with those items on our agenda, we'll start with open time for public comment. This is an opportunity for the public to comment on items not otherwise addressed on our agenda tonight. And the public can be um, raise their hand or send public comments to public comment at tcmmail.org. And each person will be given three minutes to make their comment if we have any coming in. I don't see any raised hands. Rebecca, did we get any comments? Oh, coming actually, the um, there is a raised hand. I think it's... Perhaps I can't see it, okay. Great. Um, I think it's actually Jonna Hale letting me know that I need to move her over to panelist, but um, oh, call on her real fast. Hello, Jonna. Hi. Hi. You, I just wanted. I need to, to move you over to the panelist side for your presentation. Okay. Um, but did you have a public comment under open time as well? None. None. Okay, I'm moving you now. Thanks. Okay. Um, and Great. You could just check the email and see if we had any public comments come in. Yes, I'll do that while Jana is coming over. I didn't have it open. Just give me one more moment. Okay, we do have one emailed public comment. I believe it's for open time. But let me just double check. Okay. Um, yes, this is for open time. I'll, I'll read it now. 
It is from Nick Lockwood in Corte Madera, who says, Parks and Rec Commission, this is a very brief emailed public comment in support of the speakers at the October 25th, 2021 meeting. Artificial turf facilities are desperately needed in Corte Madera. My only disagreement with the speakers was that they weren't thinking big enough. The commission should be considering turfing multiple fields at Town Park and other locations. I hope that the commission dedicates a significant part of a future meeting to discuss turf options. I was delighted to see that the Mill Valley Parks and Rec Commission is sensibly looking into all options for turfing multiple city fields. An article from December 5th is here. And he links a Marin IJ article on Mill Valley considers artificial turf for sports fields. My daughters, nine and 10 years old, both play lacrosse and soccer on many Corte Madera and Mill Valley fields. I manage soccer teams and coach lacrosse teams and the, pe the period from November to March is an absolute nightmare in terms of reserving field space due to scheduled maintenance, rain, and surface protection. Again, I echo the comments of the previous speakers on this topic. Please let us know what we need to do as a community to get this project moving. Outdoor youth sports participation is growing in our community and the grass facilities are outdated and also not viable in the face of ongoing drought conditions. I would also be happy to help out with financial support and or fundraising for this project. Thank you for your consideration, Nick Lockwood. Great, thank you for that. No other public comment through the email? No, that, that was the only public comment. And I don't see any other raised hands, so we'll close public comment and we'll move on to item four on our agenda, which is presentations. We have three tonight. The first one is an introduction of Tim Berry, Recreation Program Manager, and Ashley Howe will do that introduction. And thank you, um, Tim Berry. You can see his photo on as our Recreation Program Manager. Wave, Tim. <laughs> um, this is a delayed welcome. Tim has already um, began in October and proves his, his weight in gold every single day. He's a huge asset to our team, stepped in, hit the ground running. Um, but I did want to do a formal introduction and share a little bit about his background. Um, he is joining us from, uh, from, from excuse, excuse me, Pacifica. He's making that drive every day to join us. And he's coming with 20 years of experience as a recreation leader in his hometown of Pacifica to a recreation supervisor with the city of Burlingame. He also spent time with the Burlingame school district. So he has different perspectives that we can um, utilize. Um, and over his career, he's had the opportunity to supervise and manage a wide variety of program areas, including teens, youth sports, facility rentals, youth and adult art, fitness, and community special events. And um, he says he's excited to, to, have, to be a part of our team, but we are definitely more excited to have him. And um, I hope that everyone gets a chance to meet him in person um, and then through all of the things that we're gonna be offering in this next year. So Tim, thank you so much and welcome officially to the commission. Thank welcome. You. If you'd like to say anything, you may do so. <laughs> Uh, no, so I'm really excited. Um, I am uh, coming from Pacifica. I am a family guy. I have three children of my own. I have a 13-year-old son and I have nine-year-old twins. So my life is busy. So a fast-paced environment is something I enjoy. Um, I've been in Passion Parks and Rec my entire life and have volunteered um, through my school's PTO and my school's Little League. So very active in the community and looking forward to bringing a lot of that to Puerto Madera. Fantastic. Welcome. Welcome. We're happy to have you. Okay, uh, we'll move on to item 4B, which is a presentation of Corte Madera Lions Club from John Lister, president of Club Services and History. And welcome, John. Thank you. Look forward to hearing from you. Well, good evening. So my name is John Lister, and I am the current president of the Corte Madera Lions Club, a native San Francisco, San Franciscan. I raised my three children here in Corte Madera. And like yourselves, I'm a community volunteer. I've been a Cub Scout leader, a Boy Scout leader, an NRG leader, member of the town band, volunteer of the year. And uh, during the last 27 years, I've built the Corte Madera food bank turkey twice. <laughs> so I'm the turkey man. Currently, I have the pleasure of serving as the president of the Lions Club. Um, so we, a, we'd like to share, oh, yeah. share screen if we could. We'd like to share, we've got a presentation. Yes, I have it ready to share. Oh, um, do you want to run it or do you want me to run it? You can run it. Okay. <laughs> Just give me a moment. Um, okay, 
Are you seeing that? No, no. There. Yes, now we are. Yes. Okay. So now are you seeing full screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we're good to go. Okay. So um, now I've lost my place. <laughs> I currently have the pleasure of serving as a president of the local Lions Club. And I'd like to take a few minutes to introduce the club to all of you. Next slide. The Lions Club was established as a service organization in 1917. Next slide. When the Corte Madera Club was established in 1951, the park was a dirt lot and the women's club had begun to develop and expand it into the park we have today. One of the club's first service activities was to build a recreation center almost entirely with donated work and supplies. They celebrated with a New Year's Eve party in 1954 that remained a town tradition for many years. The center was later given to the town. Next slide. The Lions International was the first service club to admit women and our club has benefited with women presidents, board members and officers. We've also continued to look after the center over the years. In partnership with the Corte Madera Women's Club, we remodeled the outdoor patio, renovated the interior, and assisted with the sound panels. The largest club in Northern California, we meet every second and fourth Thursday night to socialize, dine, and listen to our guest speakers on topics of local interest. Next slide. You are all familiar with the used eyeglass collection program the Lions have sponsored over the years. Our club has also been doing free spot vision testing for over 2,000 students in the Corte Madera Larkspur School District. Next slide. Our members also work with St. Stephen's Church, helping with their food program. We partner with Age Friendly Corte Madera to help seniors with household tasks three times a year. And we manage and coordinate Coastal Cleanup Day. Next slide. Since 1985, we have held our annual Crab Fest as a fundraiser for the community and a tasty fun event. Last year, we adapted to COVID by having a drive-through Crab Fest. And this year, we raised over $10,000 at our first annual EV and classic car show. Next slide. We host a volunteer recognition dinner. We co-host the Oktoberfest. When we raise money at our 4th of July beer and food booth, we also pay our vendor fee to the Chamber of Commerce. And we brought back the New Year's Eve party to kick off the town's centennial year. And we are original, an original sponsor of the town band. Next slide. We have given over $10,000 to the Corte Madera, Corte Madera Community Foundation. We have also contributed to the Park and Rec Summer Scholarship and the Larkspur Corte Madera Schools. Next slide. And although we make large donations, we also support a broad range of community groups like the recent Town Turkey Trot. It has been a pleasure, next slide, last slide. It has been a pleasure to share the history and years of service the Lions Club has been able to provide to the community. And we invite you to join with us. Our motto is doing good while having fun. Thank you. Or do we have any questions? Thank you. I appreciate hearing the diversity of things that the Lions Club is involved in um, and appreciate all of the things that you bring to our community. So thank you for that. Um, thank you to the Lions Club. I have a question, which instrument do you play in the town band, John? <laughs> Well, I, I only played the first few years, first five years, I played the accordion with my mother, Gwyn, who founded the band. Oh, no kidding. That's great. But they don't need an accordion these days, <laughs> <laughs> except I do stroll during Oktoberfest. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I just want to say it was great to hear the whole thing at one time. I'm very familiar with the Lions Club, of course, and uh, I'm I'm so glad that um, that you were able to to give such a nice broad view of it, John. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate the opportunity to uh, serve the community. 
Hmm. One more question. How many members are, uh, do you have right now in the Lions Club? We have 80 members. We're quite proud of that. It's the uh, largest club, as I said, in Northern California. 83, you want Eight, to correct yourself. 83 members. <laughs> Fantastic. <Everyone counts. laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Okay, we have a presentation now from the Corte Madera Women's Clubs from Jonna Hale and Susie Beatty. And I hope that we're going to hear sort of the same rich texture and history of the Women's Club that we just heard about the Lions Club. So we'll turn it over to you. And I do have Jonna's presentation ready to go. Did you want me to share that screen as well? Yes, would you please? Okay. And Ashley I, uh, and I can make sure that both of these presentations are, are linked on the minutes to, to this so that they're available to the public to view after after the meeting as well. I just fun. wanted to say that I'm here because I'm the liaison between the Women's Club and uh, we've been trying hard to get back together with you guys and we've been trying to be close. It's been working out really nicely. And tonight, I think you're really, really fortunate if you don't know Jonna. Uh, you must uh, realize the, the value that she's had for our town and still does forever and ever. She's a historian, <laughs> really knows everything. She's been on, she doesn't, she gets embarrassed. So that's why I'm saying this. <laughs> but, you know, she served on the town council, done the kind of work that you guys are all doing now for many, many years. Uh, she's been uh, a mayor of the town uh, more, than, more than once. She's written books on the town is she's the go-to person if you want to know anything about the town. So uh, we're really happy that she's making this presentation tonight for our Women's Club. And thank you guys all for everything you're doing now too. So it's appreciated. There you go. I will, right. I will share now. Let me know when you can see okay. it. Okay, anytime. If you're one of those persons that doesn't like to be read to, you're in for it because I am not at living. I'm reading uh, what, uh, we have on the, the screen in case anybody uh, is trying to see this on a phone and, and can't do it otherwise. Hello, everyone. <laughs> We're so glad to have been offered these five minutes to share with you what you might not know about the Corte Madera Women's Club, such as that it was established 114 years ago and has been serving this community ever since. Next. As you can see, this is a then and now. The ladies of the women's club as they were in 1907 and the ladies of the women's club as they were uh, about 12 years ago, but we lined them up in the same format as the uh, original members of the women's club just to kind of show how many years had gone by. When the Women's Improvement Club was founded in 1906, this little Northern California community hadn't even been incorporated as a town. But already the women were stepping up to take responsibility for improving the quality of life for the 700 people who lived here then. You remember the great quake was uh, in 1906 and the, after that the town did gain a lot of population as families moved out of San Francisco and built homes here. Next. First, the women attacked health and safety issues, raising money to pay for electric street lights. They raised $500 in gold, which bought 32 lights at that time. Then the, for building and maintaining boardwalks and for trash collection, they supported these improvements by doing fine stitchery and other crafts and holding bake sales and organizing activities and events. They created the first park and it took them just two weeks to get it planned, have the site prepared, bring in good soil, plants, and trees, and dedicate it, as shown in this photo, taken on what was celebrated as Park Day. Next. Over the years to come, women's club members pitched in to supply hot food to firefighters. And they petitioned Congress in favor of women's suffrage and a better road system. They planted and maintained landscaping along public streets and in plots of land set aside for use as parks, such as this one that was named Railroad Park, and it is the current site of Menke Park, where we have the Piccolo Pavilion and the concerts on Sundays. And they sustained the town's social, cultural, and philanthropic activities for many, many years. Next. During the Depression years, women's club members provided food, clothing, and firewood to needy families. They awarded scholarships to women who wanted to become nurses. 
And when World War II started, they rented this large vacant home in Corte Madera and set up an emergency hospital they get equipped for the care of wounded troops who would be sent home to recover. Next. In 1951, the Women's Club partnered with the newly formed Lions Club to build the town a recreation center, which, as you know, was renamed the Community Center several years ago. The women donated the proceeds from the sale of the lot on which the club had hoped to someday have their own building. And they then raised funds every year afterward to add furnishings and amenities to the rec center. The town at that time gave the women's club an established right to use the building free of charge as the club has done until COVID interrupted on every Tuesday for workshops, potluck, luncheons, business meetings, speakers, socials, card games, projects, and fundraisers. Next. During its second 50 years of community service, the club continued to support worthy organizations, including Audubon Canyon Ranch, the Corte Madera Library, and individual elementary school classes, along with projects such as installations of drinking fountains, and the purchase of a Jaws of Life rescue tool for the fire department. Funds were earned through an annual bazaar featuring handmade items made by members, as well as through rummage sales, women winning cash prizes for gardening, and publishing a cookbook during the 1980s. A club history written in 1984 estimated that more than $1 million in present day equivalency had been donated by the Women's Club through its funding, support and services to philanthropic causes at that time. It would be interesting to calculate the value of the Women's Club's contributions to the community during the entire 114 years of its existence. Next. To this day, the Corte Madera Women's Club continues to work with other civic organizations on many local causes, which, as John mentioned, have included renovation of the community center patio, creation of town park plaza, as well as supporting the children's summer camp program. The Women's Club made a major donation of its funds to both the patio and the plaza projects, which were initiated and completed by volunteers from the Women's Club and the Lions Club in a decade ago at a time when the town had no funds available due to the recession. Next. Before the COVID pandemic intervened, the club annually organized a giant indoor yard sale at the community center to raise funds for the scholarships it awards to local high school girls who are college bound to community service volunteers. The giant indoor yard sale is normally held in the spring and it's a huge benefit to the community as local residents benefit from it as a great way to offload all kinds of things they no longer need. And they know that there are many people in Marin who depend on the events rock bottom prices for clothing, shoes, housewares, and toys, toys for their kids. It is the Women's Club's major annual fundraiser, and we're looking forward to the time it can return. Next. Since the pandemic kept the Women's Club from having our giant indoor yard sale for two years in a row now, we decided to publish a Women's Club cookbook containing hundreds of favorite recipes from members to help us fund the club's scholarship program this year. The Corte Madera Women's Club cookbook not only proved to be a great fundraising success at $20 per cookbook, but it also was a wonderful way for club members to stay connected during the shutdown of so many other activities that sustain a sense of well being in the absence of what's considered to be normal life. Next. Other activities that have kept club members' spirits strong include virtual meetings and social chat sessions via Zoom regularly scheduled outdoor hikes and field trips, and a robust monthly newsletter sent to all of our 100 members online, as well as a, a club knitting group that has knit and donated hundreds of blankets, hats, and other comforting items to hospital and care facilities throughout the county. We expect these things to continue long after the community center is once again available for club use on a regular basis. Next. And this is our last slide. We want to assure everyone that new members are welcome, including members from other communities. 
And here, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> here's a link <coughs> to our website that tells people how to join. And our, my last comment in this five minute uh, chat is the Women's Club offers a lively and interesting schedule of activities that are meaningful, productive, and rewarding. For many years, the club has had monthly potluck luncheons featuring interesting speakers on timely topics. Members are looking forward to the return of this favorite activity because it keeps members informed about current issues and encourages involvement in community life, which is especially important for members of the older residents of our town who are an increasingly large component of Corte Madera's population. And that's our presentation. Thanks for listening. Thank you, that was so interesting. Really good. Thank you. How many members of the Women's Club right now do you have? I think we have 103 at the moment. Fantastic. And I imagine many of them have been longtime residents, longtime members, or do you have a mix? We, we have a mix. I would say that most of them are uh, over 50, but we have some who are younger and we have quite a lot between the ages of 50 and 70. And I had a question about the scholarship program. How many um, young women are you able to support with the scholarships annually? Do you try to spread it out or are it, there just several? It varies from year to year. Some years we have lots of applicants or lots of people who are, uh, or students who are recommended for the scholarships. Other years we have fewer. And so we try to uh, make the amounts meaningful Mm -hmm. uh, as you might guess, in a county like Marin, uh, what seems like a lot of money in some parts of the country and even the Bay Area doesn't seem like a lot in Marin. And, and sometimes we wonder if uh, they don't know about the opportunity to apply for a scholarship or if it just doesn't seem significant enough to go through the process. But I would say that we usually give out at least two per year. And sometimes we've given out four. Other times we've given out one because we had just one applicant, but we work with the counselors at Redwood to encourage people to apply because we do have some money to help. At least by great books. Program. It's a great program. And um, fingers crossed, you'll be able to do the indoor yard sale come spring. We have reserved fingers a day. Crossed. But uh, with so many uh, <laughs> health issues are up in the air that I know. You know we just don't know what's going to happen. But we have a date in late April. Let's hope. Okay. Any questions or comments? <laughs> awesome. Thank you both. It's a wonderful part of our community. I would just like to mention that our newest uh, woman on the town council has joined the women's club, Layla Mongan. Great. So we would welcome everybody, whether they're in public office or have never attended a public meeting, there's something for them uh, at the Court of Madeira Women's Club. And we would enjoy having more members than we even have now. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Jonna. Thank you. Bye, everybody. I guess you're done with us, huh? <laughs> I can move you back to um, the attendee side so you don't have to drop off the meeting. Yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going uh, to listen. I checked but email. I don't we didn't receive any emailed public comments, but if anybody wanted to raise their hands, um, there we go, um, to like, see if we um, had any public comment from attendees. Yeah, it looks like Pat has raised her hand, Pat Ravazio. Okay. Can I enable her to talk? I think I can. Oh, you did. Okay. Hi, Pat. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, thank you so much, Jonna and John, for those uh, very, uh, very good presentations. I love that they were all written so we can uh, make them available to the public. And um, the reason why these presentations kind of came about was a concern um, that was expressed by a few of us in the community. And that was that these two organizations, while it's on record that they've been granted this uh, sort of founder status or you know, permanent member status, I don't know what you would want to call it, of the community center, it isn't really codified 
or sanctified in writing. And I would just request that um, the, the Parks and Rec Commission kind of take that on and just send something up to council that says these two organizations as founding members of the community center uh, will forever in perpetuity as long as they're in, in you know, good standing, uh, will continue to have these rights at the community center. Because as we all know, time goes on and, and staff changes and commissions change and and one day there may come a time where nobody knows the, who these organizations are and, and there's many of us that would just like to see it in the record. So thanks very much for hearing me out on that. Thanks Pat and we are going to be talking about the fee schedule shortly. Are there any other comments or questions? Okay, and I think we'll move on to the consent calendar. Uh, these are items that have generally require no discussion. Um, tonight, we just have the um, October 25th, 2021 regular commission meeting minutes. And we'll take either uh, questions or comments from commissioners, or we would entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. I'll, I'll second. second. Great, thank you. Rebecca, if you could take a vote. Commissioner Charlie? Yes. Commissioner Elson? Yes. Commissioner Kettig? Yes. Commissioner Miles? Yes. Commissioner Phipps? Commissioner McPherson is absent. Co-Chair Janowski? Yes. And Co-Chair Brown. Yes. Okay, that brings us to tonight's business items. We have one um, tonight's agenda. That's to uh, review and possibly recommend to town council the adoption of a resolution formalizing the revised parks and recreation fee schedule. And there was a staff report attached to the agenda tonight, along with um, background and additional analysis that staff has done to prepare us for this discussion tonight. So hopefully everybody had a chance to look at that in advance. And I will turn it over to Director Ashley Howe and to take us through this item. First, I wanna recognize that this was a, a team staff report. Um, uh, Rebecca had started us off with it and with the format, cause it's very, it's a lot of material to try to go through. So she was able to format it in a way that we could all um, go through it together. And um, a lot of the background information and benchmarking came from Tim and um, former interim um, Rochelle. So thank you very much for all of the legwork and going back to our colleagues and asking uh, what their rates are, why their rates have been, what is this thing, explain a little bit more, uh, which just goes back to you know how nice it is in our industry that we all help each other. We're never competing with other like agencies and um, we're collectively trying to serve all of our communities that are also very unique. Um, and unique in their histories and unique in what they um, they anticipate and what they would like from, from all of us. So to lead in with that, um, as a background, the Parks and Recreation Commission typically reviews the park um, recreation fee schedule annually in winter. Uh, we did have a first reading at the September meeting and following the direction and discussion that we had with the commission, um, we went back and did additional research and provided um, additional information on how different agencies um, had like, like uh, fees and what other fee opportunities there might be so that we can meet the need and expectations of our community. And um, following that feedback and direction, uh, we refined the recommendations and produced a spreadsheet to best illustrate the industry fee ranges. And that's provided for you in the attachments of the staff report. Um, <clears throat> And then as far as the discussion, the commission may re-review and discuss all components of the current fee schedule and provide input and direction to staff regarding um, items that could potentially be increased or decreased, added or removed, or areas in which they would like to have additional information or a, co a comparative analysis performed. Um, and the staff requests that the commission discuss and provide feedback in the following areas, and that's indoor facilities, digital marquee, Neil Cummins gym, and I add classrooms as well to that. Um, outdoor facilities, programs, permit fees, 
And that's it. So I'll go through it quickly. And then at the end, if um, Chair, Co-Chair Brown can decide whether um, we want to go through each section as a commission to discuss it or whether commissioners want to just um, make comment or ask questions about each area um, all collectively. So whatever organization works best for the commission. But beginning with indoor facilities, um, staff recommends that we replace the line um, Corona Madeira NRGs with local nonprofits. And this goes with an apply a rate of $125 an hour plus the proposed $25 an hour facility attendant fee. Uh, the local nonprofit rate would apply to any Corte Madeira or Larkspur nonprofits looking to rent the community center for meetings, classrooms, or events. And staff recommends that the deposit rate be $500 for events without alcohol and $1,000 for events with alcohol. And that was in comparison that we used to have a $500 to $2,000 deposit range without really a definition of why and where the prices come from. So we really wanted to make a clear definition. And staff recommends that a facility attendant fee be added to the fee schedule and added to on all rental accounts for staff time uh, to set up, break down equipment, and secure the facility. And this line item would, was previously included on the fee schedule but was removed at some point. Um, and for example, in one fee resolution from the early 2000s, there was a line that said additional fees that included an $85 flat building attendant fee. And this line item has also been, um, another item was minimum deposit may be refunded. Um, but to talk a little bit about the indoor facilities, especially at that, that top part, which we wanted to define a local nonprofit, this is really to reflect that we know that we have a lot of service groups in the organization that aren't defined in the later documentation. And this gives us another tier as far as resident, non-resident, and local nonprofits. So we hope that that makes our facility more advantageous and um, affordable to local community groups. Going into the digital marquee, um, staff really wants to um, just strike it from the strike the commercial use right now from the current um, fee structure and have a more thorough conversation and really develop the, the policies for this going forward. Uh, Neil Cummins gym, and then I've added classrooms to that. Um, and then we've learned, um, we've proposed to change Marin residents to Corona Madeira Larkspur residents and have other Marin residents be included in the non-resident category. And through further research with the, um, the school district, we did find that right now um, there's a discrepancy between the rates for Neil Cummins gym and um, the hall gym. And we were learned that the, the rates that the Larkspur Recreation and Corte Madeira Recreation should be charging for school district, use of school district property should be the same. And so you'll see in our attachment that we really want to um, make sure that those are comparable. So we have a couple of different scenarios that, the, that we can listen to the commission and, and take your direction and advice on this. Um, but uh, Corte Madeira Parks and Recreation currently charges, um, let's see, that's my place there. Larkspur Recreation's rate for the hall gym is $50 an hour for most groups, which is $10 an hour less than the Corte Madeira charges for CYO basketball, but $15 an hour more than CYO volleyball is charged for Neil Cummins gym. So there's a discrepancy there that we hope to smooth out. And then through informal communication with the city of Larkspur, um, staff learned that Larkspur staff plan to propose a 2% cost of living increase annually to gym uh, rates. And I don't believe that they, under, they were aware that we should also have our rates tied together. So it might also pursue additional conversation and collaboration with Larkspur as they set their new rates effective uh, July 1st as we are. Um, so we could either be the trendsetter or we could try to negotiate more or we could assimilate with their existing rates, assuming that 2%. So right now, uh, the staff recommends that we move to a $52 an hour adding, and adding a commercial rate of $100 an hour, which is what um, Larkspur has unpublished, but will be published on the, the next existing schedule. Um, since January uh, 1st, Corte Madera Parks and Recreation has also been given the opportunity to manage facilities use requests for non-school hours at Neil Cummins School, and that includes classrooms, and the existing rate for classrooms, classroom fees from the district is $17 an hour, so we wish to add that to the fee schedule. Um, outdoor facilities, um, this section includes fees for picnic areas, Minky Park, athletic fields, tennis court key, and sand volleyball court. Um, there are separate fees for quarter meter residents and non-residents, as well as the required deposit for some rentals. Staff recommends the creation of a new line adding, um, item adding commercial use permit to allow businesses to operate classes, clinics, or other services in outdoor town facilities. And this practice was initiated during COVID as a means of supporting businesses with outdoor space to conduct their businesses when they were not able to do so indoors. And it's been a successful partnership for businesses and a source of revenue for the town. 
And staff recommends the removal of a daily tennis court fee rate, which um, was supported in our last discussion. Programs, um, Coordinator Children's Center, um, we don't uh, propose or recommend any changes to that. That was newly adopted in this last fiscal year on July 20th. Um, Age-Friendly Integration Center, um, we need to delete that since the center is no longer operating at the community center. The staff is working to integrate those popular programs into the um, current uh, the curriculum offered by the department and has already begun doing so. Uh, summer playground, this uh, program was not effective and uh, <clears throat> not offered in July 2020 or 2021 due to COVID, and it was replaced with a temporary program that was able to fluctuate in here to state and county guidelines and restrictions. And staff recommends removing this program from the fee schedule temporarily to allow the department to operate and rebuild and rebrand the traditional summer camp. And under new leadership in the wake of COVID-19, staff would like to offer a community a new camp program for summer 2022 and then go from there. Um, permit fees. This section includes the fees for filming or special event permits, and these are used um, not as frequently, um, but we do have a couple of recommendations. Uh, so we don't have any recommendations just th at this time. Um, to date, I have approved and reviewed two different special event permits. So we're working through the kinks, and I'd really like to have a little bit more time to um, understand uh, what's involved in it before we try to change any rates or make any recommendations for change of process. Um, section four of the resolution states that uh, use fees charges excluding the duty of staff applicable to users of the town's parks and recreation facilities shall not be applied to town sponsored programs, town homeowners associations, town civic organizations, Lexburg Puerto Madera school district. Mm -hmm. And regarding section one, Puerto Madera Volunteer Fires Association is an outdated term in one of our versions. We've got a couple of versions, but I want to codify it collectively that it should change and for, for going forward, that um, it should be referred to as the Central Marine Fire Authority. Um, and then regarding section two, no homeowners associations have requested the use of the community center for meetings and recent records and staff recommends no longer offering this option to homeowners associations and instead offering um, the use of smaller facilities like town hall. Um, if the commission wishes to continue to offer homeowners association discounts, the Corn Madera Community Center, that a reasonable rate be proposed by and a facility attendant fee be applied to offset staff costs to support the access and use of the facility. Regarding section three, staff is working to create an individual building use agreement with a defined town civic organizations listed above. And staff notes that it's important to codify use and expectations with each community group individually and ideally recoup the cost of the services of the facility attendant fee and says that up tables, chairs for each group specifications be available for assistance and troubleshooting during the event meeting and uh, meeting or event take down and put away tables and chairs and secure the facility and staff's currently working directly with those groups listed to draft unique agreements. And again, this is just something that we are going to recommend in the conversation with these groups and the individual groups will be negotiating with the town to create building use agreements. Regarding section four, the town has a current JPA and joint use agreement in place, so no changes are needed to be made with the joint use of the school district facilities. And section five of the resolution states that employees of the town of Port Madeira, the Central Marin Police Authority, and Central Marin Fire Department shall be allowed to participate in Port Madeira summer playground program <clears throat> at no charge to their immediate family, and that all of their use of parks and recreation programs and facilities will be charged at the standard rate minus 25%. Staff recommends that the commission continue to support and recommend that council continue to offer this benefit to town staff as well as fire and police staff. Staff also notes that the following areas for fee topics may be included for future fee discussions. Um, we have kind of a running list that we're keeping. <coughs> Some of those are Corte Madera Football Club, which is our soccer program. Right now they have um, recreation leagues, they have spring clinic, and they have competitive leagues. Um, tennis court rental fee, basketball court rental fee, and advertising in the printed parks and recreation activity guide. None of those fees are currently listed, but in the future we might want to bring those for recommendation and, and discussion. Fiscal impact based on the draft of the, the revised fee resolution would include the opportunity to recoup some staff costs associated with supporting facility rentals through the proposed facility attendant fee and collecting consistent park use fees by adding a commercial use permit of park areas, allowing businesses to conduct classes in outdoor town facilities. The fiscal impact related to changing the rates for use of Neil Cummins Gym 
would, uh, would depend on scheduling requests of, of existing St. Patrick's CYO groups and other potential local nonprofit groups. Currently, the CYO volleyball program is charged $35 an hour for the gym, while the basketball program is charged $60 an hour. The total gym use for 2021 or 2020 and 2021 volleyball season was 154 hours for a total of 5,390. And if the hours remain consistent, the organization would pay have to pay an additional $2,310 at the proposed rate. The total estimate gym estimated gym use for the 2021-2022, which is projected for basketball season, is 281 and a half hours of total use of $16,905. And if those hours remain consistent, the organization would actually save $2,830 for the proposed rates. And again, those proposed rates are to follow our joint use agreement with the school district and offer the same prices as uh, the same use rates as Larkspar, which would be $52 an hour. So our options tonight that I'd like you to consider is support the resolution as presented and provide recommendation to the town council for adoption of a resolution formalizing the recommended fee schedule. Two, recommend modifications to draft resolution and provide recommendations to the town council for adoption of resolution formalizing the recommended fee schedule. Or three, provide further direction to staff. Thank you for taking us through that and for all of the work that went into getting to this staff report and the fee schedule recommendations. Um, it's incredibly thorough. Before we open it up to public comment or questions, are there any questions from the commissioners on the staff report or the proposed fees. I don't have any questions right now. I just want to echo what you said, Louise. I mean, that is that's an incredibly uh, complex document, a really challenging process to go through everything. And I think um, we met with the executive uh, subcommittee met with staff, so I, we've put comments in, but I think Ashley, you and your team and Tim did a great job really listening to the community. I think um, it really satisfies the uh, desire for, you know, community um, discounts and special treatment for some community groups, but also aligning things with Larkspur and simplifying and it just, you guys did a really nice job. There are no questions from commissioners and we will bring it back for discussion. Um, we'll open it up to the community. I, there was a hand raised and now there's, oh, the hand is raised again. Um, so Pat, recognize Pat Ravazio, you'd like to make a comment. I think you're on mute. Hey, hi again, hi, hi again. Thanks a lot and great job, Ashley. That was a lot of uh, a lot of crunching you did on all those numbers and uh, and the research that went into it. I really appreciate that work. Um, I didn't hear any mention. Maybe I missed it. I, I actually reviewed stuff earlier and still didn't see any mention of the Lions and Women's Club being sort of lifted up and out of these categories and and included in this. That there's a no fee uh, charge for those groups. So I don't know how. You might want to word that or get that as part of the official document. Um, the one thing about the volleyball thing is it, the, the, and basketball is that there's many more players that come in on a basketball team usually than volleyball, just because of the way the courts are set up and the way there's usually more, oftentimes more. So that may be a reason, I'm not sure. Um, and then on the language thing, the only thing that um, the definition of the nonprofit group, just the word nonprofit can oftentimes not really be enough. You, you may not know that Rolex is a nonprofit. Um, there's all kinds of nonprofits. So if we can just add a, an, uh, an adjective and then it, there comes in some staff uh, discernment. And I, I love that there was staff discernment available on, on, on many of these things. I think it's good to put that in there so that you do have the opportunity to look at these groups one-on-one -on -one and, and see if they're what you think the community would want to support. But maybe if it's called a community serving nonprofit. So if it's something that does serve the community and is inclusive, um, I just think if you just say nonprofit, that opens it up to you know, the nonprofit gun show, the not, and it doesn't give you any opportunity to, um, 
have have that discernment and 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 this way you would you'd be able to say well we don't consider you actually community serving uh, I don't know I don't know exactly how to word it but it just troubles me that it should um, maybe just the language should just get a little bit more refinement so that you've got a good leg to stand on when you want to make some decisions and I think that was it great job really really appreciate that work you did Thank you, Pat. That's great. Um, looks like Susie Beatty has a hand raised. We'll unmute you. Oh, thank you. Um, my question is, uh, Ashley, I didn't catch the uh, NRG comment that you made. Uh, where do they fall? Where do the NRGs fall into this fee schedule? Would you mind clarifying that? You were, you, there was a lot to digest. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, the NRGs for um, for trainings are actually listed in the service organization, so they're on there already. Right. Um, but there was language that said NRG group, um, and it, we wanted to change it to nonprofits in general, so not as defined as NRG. Oh, all right. So N NRGs would be considered a service group, and they are not, there is no, is there no fee? Do I understand that for that? That was a discounted rate. Huh. Okay, and uh, uh, schedule. Okay, I do believe they are they are town sponsored, right? I think they're town sponsored, but or would they be Rebecca? Oh, Susie, I'll have to look back at the records, but I remember uh, that in the past, Parks and Rec staff had built something into the fee schedule that actually listed out NRGs as a special distinct category with a discounted rate. And that was something going back to, I want to say 2019. Um, well, okay. Well, I guess I'll just right now make a little plea for them because, um, the, you know, the NRGs are trying to, that raising money for their, for the trailers and the emergency stuff is just really, really hard. And, uh, because of what the type of thing that they do, I, I think they should be considered, boy, as, as liberally as possible in your, in your fee area. Uh, I don't know that the NRGs have had input with this, but well, as- This is for the, the, the central- uh, Central Marin NRG. Right, for the, the three big meetings per year that you had had. Okay. Um, the smaller groups actually just uh, used the town hall facilities. Right, 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 right. But uh, there are occasions when when uh, we do want to use the or Central Marin wants to use the bigger one. Anyway, right. thank you. I won't keep you any longer. I'll just uh, try to be more aware. Thanks, you guys, and for all the work. Thank you. Just a clarification: their energies are mentioned in two different locations, so that might make it a little bit clearer. Um, in the agenda packet on uh, listed out in the. Um, Let's see, in the town civic organizations, uh, group J is town sponsored energy response um, group trainings. And so that's when the larger groups would utilize the community center. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the, the groups that would have individual building use agreements made with the town. And then second was on the actual fee schedule with all of our rates. Um, currently, uh, the, NR, the Court of Madeira energies is listed as the approved fiscal year 2021 at 50% off the resident rate. And that's what we wanted to title the local nonprofits in general. So not taking away anything that's already provided to the NRGs. Okay, thank you. Doesn't look like we have any other hands raised. Did we get any public comment on this, Rebecca, to the email? No, there were no emailed public comments received regarding this item. Okay. Susie, okay, just want to make sure, Susie, you took your hand down that that was an old hand raise. Okay. Any other public comment? Okay, then we'll bring it back to the commission uh, for discussion. And my suggestion is going to be that we take this on a section by section basis so that we can um, have a proper discussion, clarify any um, open issues that commissioners have and try to get to resolution based on 
staff recommendations or any other feedback that the commission wants to provide. So that would um, start us off with indoor facilities. And um, Ashley, you can correct me if I'm uh, if I missed something, but I think there are three specific things that we need to discuss and, and resolve within indoor facilities. Uh, the first is changing from Court of Madeira Energies to local nonprofits and applying a rate of $125 an hour for, the, for those groups. The second is having deposit rates um, keyed to whether or not the event has alcohol or not. And the third is to have a standard facility attendant fee that gets added to the fee schedule uh, to ensure that we um, have costs covered for setup reimbursement, I mean, setup and um, breakdown and support through the event. So are there any commission comments or need for clarifications on this or points of view about um, whether or not to adopt these particular recommendations? on indoor facilities. Can I just ask for clarification in terms of um, the Cordum Dare Energy is now being called local nonprofits. The rate of 125 an hour, what more, is that, a, it sounds like that was not a new rate or it is a different rate. Was there any rate before when they were using it? That 50% of the resident rate. Okay. It didn't have a dollar value. I see, I see. But there was a fee attached historically. Great, great. Thank you. So this gets to a standardized fee for those nonprofits. Um, and taking into consideration some of the, the feedback that we heard tonight and um, Pat's comment about what is considered a not-for-profit, we might want to just clarify that language just to ensure that they really are the kind of community serving organizations that we intend them to be. I thought that was a good suggestion, adding community serving. So I, uh, I think that there's some risk to doing that uh, because this is about cost and you either are a nonprofit or, or you aren't. It's sort of a classification that just exists in the law. And I think if we start carving it out separately, uh, and making those judgment calls about which one we think is community enough for us or we like their cause, that it just, that always concerns me. So I just throw that out there as something I think that we should be cautious of. Although I, I understood the spirit of it. Emily, would there be a, would there be a, a way for us to, speak more specifically to the spirit, but still be within kind of the legal appropriateness if we talked about like needs to be a quarter Madeira based or something like that. Right, could we better define local? I think that's that would be, a, that would be something that is sort of not judgment call about the purpose of it and still is tethered to nonprofit status, which is just a financial description. Not uncommon for other um, uh, municipalities to have just their town um, be the nonprofit. For example, Benicia is Benicia nonprofits. And any other nonprofit would then fall into the non-resident fee. Correct. A Ashley, does that restrict our revenue opportunities in a way that is meaningful? If we said, I mean, do you think that that matters to us? I don't think it matters on a fiscal perspective. I think it's whether we want to um, act as a Twin Cities or more of a, a Corte of Madeira exclusivity of that opportunity. Okay. So if we did the Corte of Madeira Larkspur, you feel like we would cover the majority of people who are using it from a nonprofit today? We didn't hear that last comment, Ashley. I don't know if you got muted. Yes, that would be my recommendation. Define um, local as Corner Madeira Larkspur. Yeah, I think, that, I think that, that's a good idea. That was a good suggestion, Sarah. Yeah, I'm in favor of that.
Any comments or discussion on the uh, deposit rates or the facility attendant fee? It's very reasonable. Yeah. Okay, so I think um, direction to staff is with that amendment to uh, how we classify nonprofits and have it be Corte Madera Larkspur that we are comfortable with staff recommendations for indoor facilities. Okay, um, on the digital marquee, um, there was a question around commercial use and the recommendation from staff is to temporarily remove this from the fee resolution and address this at a subsequent meeting. I'm seeing a lot of head nodding. So unless there's any discussion about this, I think we're supportive of that and we'll, we'll ex expect staff to come back and have a point of view on that in the future. Okay, on Neil Cummins Gym, um, changing Marin residents to Corte Madera Larkspur residents, which would be consistent with how we're classifying um, residents in other areas and have other Marin residents included in the non-resident category. And there is also a recommendation here. There, actually we should maybe take these um, one at a time, there are quite a few. So maybe if we can get everybody to align on that clarification, local, Corte Madera, Larkspur, and all of them were in would be non-residents. Sounds good. Okay. Um, Great, so the, the next one is to resolve the discrepancy between the rates for the um, use of Neil Cummins and to align with Larkspur so that we are within the school district um, charging the same fees and based on staff's uh, research and recommendations and the expectation around where Larkspur will be increasing their fees uh, with cost of living, um, changing the hourly rate to $52 an hour for both Corte Madera and Larkspur residents and non-residents, a consistent fee. Any concerns, questions, discussion? I, I think that makes sense. I mean, we've just been working towards aligning our policies over time. So this seems very consistent to me. And it, it doesn't make sense to have the two different gyms have different prices in my opinion. I agree. Yeah, I think it'll serve our, it'll serve us well. It's just very straightforward and easy for the community to understand as well. Hi, there's, um, there's three rates that we, we would be aligning. So it would be the proposed $52, which would be proactively including the 2% increase, um, adding the $100 an hour for a commercial, which um, we don't have already. And their, there's, their fee schedule will be reflective. And then also for us, adding a $17 an hour for a classroom space. Does the school maintain any, or the district maintain any um, uh, autonomy in terms of their classroom? classroom space that our arrangements are made directly to them through organizations? As of January 1st, um, they have allowed us to take all of those reservations and act as the facility managers for them in, in negotiating. Uh, there's only one exception that, that we had made and we said that we were comfortable with having uh, Viva Espanol communicate directly with the district and, and contract with them for use and waive our, um, waive our um, verbal agreement on that with the district because there was not gonna be a way that um, their structure of contracting and our structure of contracting could meet. I see. Okay, so everybody's comfortable with $52 an hour for the gym, 17 for the classrooms and the $100 for the commercial use. Okay, great. Okay, outdoor facilities. Um, the recommendation here is to add a new line item for the commercial use permit to enable businesses to continue to operate outdoor classes, clinics, and other services in town facilities. This has been something that obviously took off during COVID, but could potentially continue in the future, even when we get to a post COVID uh, future and is a nice opportunity for revenue for Parks and Rec and for the town. I think this has been a great addition to the town. I love seeing all those classes happening. It, there's a certain vibrancy to it and a sense of community that's happening that's very, very visible. So I think this has been really positive and hope that it does continue. 
even post COVID. The other um, recommendation here is to remove the daily tennis court key rate. And I think when we spoke at the last meeting, there wasn't much use of that, if any. Okay, I'm not hearing any discussion, so I'm going to say commission is supportive of that as well, those changes. Okay, moving on to programs. So no changes recommended on the Puerto Madera Children's Center. Uh, recommendation to delete the fees associated with age-friendly intergenerational center because it's no longer operating within the community center and um, to give staff time to come back with a full recommendation on uh, a summer program with new rates, fees, and program structure. I think that that makes sense. Okay, no discussion, questions? Right, I would say we are supportive of that, commission supportive of that as well. Moving on to the permit fees. Um, these are um, broken out into a number of different areas. Actually the permit fees, I'm sorry, are for filming and special event permits. Um, no, no changes recommended at this time. Not frequently used, if that's appropriate. Okay, moving to section four of the resolution, um, which speaks to the fees and charges for specific user groups, including town sponsored programs, homeowners associations, civic organizations, and the school district. Um, there was a recommendation to clarify the language from Corte Madera Volunteer Firefighters Association to Central Marin Fire Authority. That's just consistent naming with how our organizations are labeled. So I don't think that there's gonna be any pushback on that at all, we should clarify that. And um, section two, um, the homeowners associations have not been uh, using the facilities. And so there is, I believe a recommendation to, um, well, a, a question around whether or not to continue to offer homeowners associations a discount or just have them be folded into the resident use fees, I believe is, is the recommendation here. I agree. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. And um, there is specific work underway with staff to work with each of the individual town civic organizations to come to use agreements um, that would be relevant to their historic use, I believe, and also uh, future expectation um, and have something codified so that we have something in place that we can go back to and, and don't need to address this on an ongoing or one-off basis. So that work is underway. And I imagine, um, Ashley, that you'll come back to commission with a report on the outcome of those conversations. So this speaks directly to some of the comments that we heard from the community. So if the commission has any feedback here or guidance to provide to staff as they enter into this, these agreement discussions, this would be a good time to offer that up. Okay, continue, go forth. <laughs> yeah. All right, section um, five, related to summer playground. Um, again, the, the request from staff is to give them time to come up with a program and recommendations around rates overall, but specifically as it relates to employees of the town of Puerto Madera, Central Marin Police Authority and Central Marin Fire Department, um, they would be allowed to participate in summer playground or some camp program at no charge for their immediate family and at a reduced rate use other facilities for park and rec, um, I'm sorry, use other park and rec programs and facilities at a, a discounted rate. I support that. Yep. Okay. Uh, and there are future topics that will be addressed um, in future fee discussions as needed, Corte Madera Football Club for a soccer program, tennis court rental fees, basketball court rental fees, and advertising in 
the printed park and rec activity guide. And I would just suggest to staff that um, that we continue to look at opportunities for both printed and digital activity guide um, if there are advertising opportunities there, not making it exclusive to the printed program. Okay. And um, that is the totality of, well, actually, I think we need to specifically address the question of CYO. Is that right, Ashley? Um, we... <clears throat> well, I think you've already kind of addressed it. We wanted to outline it in the fiscal impact, but I think yeah. we've, um, we've already heard a consensus with the commission. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. We set the, the rates of the, the 52 to go proactive with, um, with Larkspur. So everybody's clear on that, that we are not providing a special rate for CYO. <clears throat> okay, Ashley, are there any specific open issues, questions or um, areas the staff needs direction that we did not just cover in this discussion that we should make sure we do tonight? I don't think so. I think the only thing that I'm hearing um, the, the, the commission request an amendment to is to define local nonprofits and indoor facility rentals as Corte Madera Larkspur nonprofits. Okay. Thank you again to the entire staff for all of the work because it made it um, both very clear and easy to go through and to have the benchmarks and the alignment with Larkspur was enormously helpful. So thank you. I know that that was a tremendous amount of work. Indeed. Okay, um, so we'll move on to staff updates and commission reports. Um, we'll start with the director update, Ashley. Reorganize my structure here. <laughs> All right. Um, well, first off, we have exciting um, news to share is that we had our opening reception for the art exhibition um, on Saturday the 4th, and we had at least 100 people come through. We have about 50 um, artists on display from um, print to oil to watercolor to ceramics um, to photos. It's really beautiful. There's um, there's Daily, daily opportunity is free to come by and check it out if you aren't able to come to one of the evening receptions. The only caveat is that we are close tomorrow because um, we're having the solar um, panel work done. So they're shutting down all of our, our power. So we are close to the public tomorrow, but we really hope that um, the commission and anybody listening um, will join us for the closing reception on Thursday, the 16th. We'll have live music. We'll have the Lions Club supporting their bar. Um, it was really beautiful. We've got some festivities um, and decorations that Tim and staff set up. It's really looking beautiful. And I think that you'll get a sense of the holiday spirit. And if you need some Christmas shopping, you're also welcome to purchase. Most things are available. Uh, it's nice to support our local artists. Um, senior outreach continues and we're beginning our, um, our holiday greetings from the community center, as well as sharing opportunities for seniors like the holiday light tours and then possibly um, a smoke a CO2 detector testing services through Age Friendly. We're still pursuing opportunities with that. Um, but if you haven't had a pedicab with Cheryl Longinotti, um, we hope that you join her. It's gonna be great. There's flyers and information going out in all of our weekly senior lunches as well. Um, senior programs and activities. Uh, we are wrapping up the, the book and puzzle exchange. So if you'd like a last minute book or puzzle, please come down and pick it up. We aren't accepting any donations because um, we're going to begin transitioning our lobby into more of a formal reception so that we can prepare for private events going into the new year. Um, but we do want to keep at least one bookshelf as a lending library because we found that people really like to stop by and check it out. So there will be a little bit, but just not as much. Um, congregate meals go through the end of the year, and then we're waiting for county direction to see whether we're going to be hosting in person. So we are just, um, we're signed up to support the, the county um, wherever they want us to do. So whether we go into the grab and go into the next year or whether we offer in person, we said when they're ready, we're ready. So we'll provide that need. And we have a really consistent 40 plus group that wants to come by and say hi to Perry every Wednesday and pick up their lunches and chat. So it's really nice. Uh, 
<clears throat> our Corner Madeira Children's Center is doing a, a, a wonderful job. Um, everybody's familiar with different things that have been in the media and IJ and just wanted to let you know that we are following all of the guidelines and direct communication with all of public health and uh, really proud of our staff in the professional and most uh, responsible and respective manner following all of the guidance and providing a great opportunity for kids to have service uh, before care before school, after school, and then during those early dismissal dates. So we've got a great team over there. After school enrichment classes, um, we had both uh, the children's, the, 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 excuse me, the after school programs and the childcare have registration begin on November 20th. And we had a, a record high of revenue and sales transactions on that day. So it was really exciting and a good um, team morale booster for that. And um, to highlight for Aaron, who's not able to be on the call tonight, is let me see. In the first two weeks of registration for um, after school programs, we had 438 signups for the winter spring classes, and that's January through May. So that's really great. And it just shows the, the diversity of the programs and that our printed collateral went home with kids before Thanksgiving which we wanted to have it go, go out before Christmas break and the holiday break, but it went out before Thanksgiving and Aaron really worked hard to get that out. And I think it looks really wonderful. So in case you hadn't seen it, they did go both to Neil Cummins and Cove and they have different pictures on the front, but both of them are the magic class. So if you haven't seen those, let us know. And there's digitally um, available online as well. Um, staff recruitment, we have uh, tomorrow is our second hearing for council to review the possibility of adding a facility attendant classification series, which would include a full-time facility attendant and part-time opportunities. And that those positions would directly support us being able to open the facilities, both at the community center and at Neil Cummins, um, secure them and provide um, the setup and breakdown for equipment. So those are, that's a big deal for us. So hopefully everything goes well tomorrow and that's approved and then we'll begin recruitment for those two positions. Um, in the meantime, we're, we're recruiting for um, temporary positions to help us use uh, some of the open and closing, and then we'll be hiring for um, front desk customer service support as well. So we're starting to gear up. We want to be able to fully serve everybody that comes back through our doors and calls us. Um, <clears throat> Update on indoor meetings and activities. Um, as we've heard, the Women's Club and the Lions have been meeting as well as uh, we've got a, um, a band a concert next week. Uh, so we're starting to get people back in the building. We've, we're testing it with our stakeholder groups and they're being super um, responsive to all of the changing guidance and respectful of all of our wishes and policies and being really conservative in their re-entry approach. So we thank them for that. And it's nice to have people back in our building. Um, working to develop a work plan to, for the department, and we will share that with the um, annual report next meeting. And school menus, that's what I mentioned. If you haven't already seen it, let me know, and I will happy to send you a hard copy or a digital link. And our spring activity guide is January through May, and that should be coming out in the next two weeks. Um, and that'll be the last digital. And then for summer, we will go back to print and digital. So um, we know that as far as the master plan uh, survey feedback, we wanted hard copies going out to residents and um, we will be returning with summer. So it'll be a kickoff for all those summer programs. So that's exciting for us. <laughs> it'll be a kind of a return to normal. Are there any questions? That's great. I, I'm so sorry. I don't mean to drag us back, but there was one thing that we didn't get to, I think, with respect to the possible recommendation to town council and adoption of, of fee schedules that I had intended to bring up and, and we didn't get there. Does anybody mind me doing that really quickly? Actually, Commissioner Charlie, I was also going to uh, break in and, and ask <laughs> if we could revisit that briefly. I um, was looking in my emails for an answer to Susie Beatty's question and then um, got lost track of, of where the discussion was going and saw we had gone on to the next thing. And I would feel more comfortable if you were making a recommendation to council um, that it was a formal vote so we could note any, um, any uh, support or, or dissension. So we should be able to have that. And, and also it would be good if um, at least one of the two co-chairs was present when we do bring this to council to talk about the vote and the support from the commission. Um, but I, I 
think that this is a um, an issue that that should be carried forward to council with a, a vote that we can say that the vote was um, a certain number for and against the the recommended resolution. So thank you, thank you for breaking in. I was I was waiting for a, a moment to break in and, and say that as well. So thank you. Thank you for bringing us back. All right, let's step back. <laughs> let's take care of that business and then we'll move back into updates and commissioner reports. So um, based on the discussion, I think that um, what we're looking for is a motion to support uh, the resolution as presented with the minor modifications that we had discussed uh, and to have staff take this forward to town council for an adoption of the resolution formalizing the recommended fee schedule. So do we have a motion? If I could ask for a, a bit of clarification first though. So I, yes. as I understand, it's is it attachment one and attachment two that we would send to town council? I'm not sending all of it unless the commission wanted, wanted something different. And the only reason I bring it up is that I just noticed that if we adopt the resolution, the language in it says that we are rescinding a prior resolution 06 2019, which makes sense. But then the following document regarding, um, I think it was the Corte Madera Children's Center rate schedule, which we also were supportive of, mentions that it's amending that resolution, which we just recommended was rescinded. So I thought we just might want to tweak that language so that they're consistent and there's no confusion. Yeah, we can tweak that so that it makes it clear. We don't usually um, amend <laughs> mid-cycle like that, but we can we can tweak it so that the language reads as long as as long as that that um, children's center uh, fee schedule is incorporated into the resolution that you're asking council to adopt. I, I think you'll be fine. Got it. So we Great. just have to make sure that that is incorporated. Perfect. All righty. Great, thank you for that perspective and detail orientation. It's important and legal, eagle eye. <laughs> <laughs> You're being gracious, it's sometimes annoying, sorry. <laughs> All right. So was that, that your, your concern? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, do we have a motion? Also move. Thank you. <laughs> do we have a second? Second. Great, can we take a vote please, Rebecca? Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, Commissioner Charlie. Yes. Commissioner Elson. Yes. Commissioner Koenig. Yes. Commissioner Miles. Yes. Commissioner Phipps. Yes. Commissioner McPherson is absent. Uh, Co-Chair Janowski. Yes. And Co-Chair Brown. Yes. Okay. Great, thank you for doubling us back and keeping us in process. Okay, um, so are there any other questions or comments on the director's update? If not, we'll move on to commissioner reports and then we'll give public a chance to have any comments or questions on either of those topics. Um, updates from recent town council meetings. Aline, you attended the October meetings, I believe. October? <laughs> or was it November? I think it was a typo and it's supposed to be November, which would have been- I think meeting. so too. Yeah, I, yeah, it should be November and that I, would, I did not attend And I was not able to attend either. I think the earlier November one was the one where we just where we were presenting to town council on survey details. So I know that there was attendance from the commission. Okay. Okay. Executive advisory committee. Uh, we did meet on November 19th and we just went through agenda items and then Tim walked us, Tim and Ashley walked us through all of the uh, very detailed work and benchmarking that went through their uh, fee schedule analysis. So that was 
that was what we covered. Great. Okay. Um, from the subcommittees, does anybody from the programming subcommittee have an update to share? Uh, we did not meet, but we um, have decided that we want to sit down with Ashley and get some more direction from her as to what our next step should be and how we can best help the, the department and the committee. So we're trying to set up that meeting with Ashley as our, our next steps. We also feel like getting information from the master plan um, is also important in kind of dictating where we go. Great, so the master plan um, survey results are of course available and I know everybody has those and there were some, um, I think some good indicators in there about where we could spend some time. So that would probably inform your conversation with Ashley. About community engagement. That we have been doing some work on the back end to help support the survey and getting those lists together. So appreciate Ashley kind of making sure we get the broad community there, um, but have no action items to take forward at this time. So look to the commissioner to Ashley to, to advise us if there's something you need us to be working towards. And I'll just do a quick update on the master planning subcommittee. We did use the information on um, the community groups. So thank you very much for that to help to um, populate a, the first of two small focus groups that we're doing in order to get some detailed feedback from community organizations that have um, a strong both engagement in the community and a vested interest in some particular topics. We wanted to be sure that we had a chance to hear from them. So the first one was on November 30th. We got some um, very, we had an incredibly engaged group um, with a lot of ideas and a lot of really valuable feedback. The second of those groups will be this Thursday, the 9th. Um, we have about, I think, eight, eight or nine community groups representatives involved in that group. And these are precursors or in advance of two open community meetings that we'll be holding in January. The first of which is Friday, January 7th from 5.30 to 7.30. And the second is Saturday, January 8th from 10 until noon. And we are still working on locations for those community meetings and there will be more information publicized as we solidify the details. And I believe, um, that Ashley is arranging to, to have childcare during those meetings, at least on this, this Saturday. Is that correct? So that we can ensure that we get um, good participation from the community and there isn't any barrier to having people involved. So more to come on that. Um, are there any other individual commissioner updates that you'd like to share at this time? I'll just I'll share that I uh, dialed into that November 30th call and it was just very well facilitated by Ryan Murray and um, the feedback was, you know, um, everyone just did a really nice job of presenting their thoughts. It was very respectful. It was just really refreshing because it was just a, a really nice, um, good conversation. Lots of good ideas generated. Not a lot of consensus, but a lot of really good ideas. <laughs> Great. Okay, I guess we'll open it up for any other public um, comment on any of these items. We would invite that. And I'm not seeing any raised hands. Okay, so before we close the meeting, just a couple of housekeeping issues. Um, our next meeting is January 24th, so after the holidays. There's some topic items that are suggested in the agenda. Uh, to discuss the memorial bench, plaque, and tree program. Um, and I'm not certain, Ashley, if you intended the digital marquee reader board use policies to also be part of that same meeting or subsequent meeting. Yeah. Are there any other topics that commissioners would like us to investigate incorporating into the January or a future meeting? Okay, then let's see, we've got um, 
December. Commissioner Charlie is covering council meetings in December, which have been moving. And then, um, and then Shannon, you'll take January, which will kick off and probably both occur before our January 24th meeting. Ashley, when are you planning to present the fee resolution to council? That is a great question. I haven't solidified uh, the agenda item with Rebecca yet. Okay, just keep us posted then. Oh, thanks. Okay, if there are no other questions or comments. I'll call this meeting closed. Thank you, everybody. Happy holidays. Enjoy, and we'll regroup in January. Happy, Happy holidays. You. Thank Happy you, Louise. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.